You're listening to the coaching series on the Aligned and Magnetic podcast, where we're bringing our good and bad experiences with the professional coaching industry to the table to talk about them. Our mission is to really create more awareness for both coaches and consumers of coaching so that they can make better decisions and also have better coaching relationships and see better results. We are so glad to have you here. Now let's dive in. Welcome to the Aligned and Magnetic Podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Ashley. I'm an ICF certified business alignment coach, and they call me the money mindset and manifestation queen. I'm here to help you make your vision for your life and business a reality and doing it in a way that lights you the fuck up. If you're ready to build an aligned, magnetic, and profitable business so that you can live the life of your dreams, you are definitely in the right place. In this podcast, I promise to provide you with the raw lessons, the tools, and powerful questions to help you on the way to creating success your way. Thank you so much for being here. Now let's dive in. This is part two of our conversation with Ashley and Pam Griffiths, the founder of the Coach Approach Academy. If you haven't yet heard part one, make sure you go have a listen to episode 35 because there's a lot of juiciness in there first. So let's talk a bit about what coaching can do versus what it can't do. I feel like we're all quiet because we're like, coaching can do anything. My experience, coaching truly can play a role I was taking notes, right? Like I always take notes. And I'm like, honestly, who can benefit from coaching? I'm like, parents can benefit from coaching. Um, Consultants, like I'm sure lawyers, like anybody literally can benefit from coaching because it's, I honestly feel like a tool that humans in general need at this point in our our lives um, to help bring back that curiosity and to undo the conditioning. Now, specifically, if you are looking to hire a coach, you should probably know that coaching can help you get the results that you desire to get. Um, And something that I actually really love about coaching is that you don't have to know anything about the person's life or expertise or industry to help them get to the results. And actually, it's easier if you don't. It's easier to stay true to coaching if you don't know the industry. I'm just laughing because this is when I first started training. I remember when I'm getting so caught in the weeds in a conversation, you know, because I was caught up in the story as you know I was helping the top piece of the iceberg but not getting the underneath piece even though it was right there in front of me right so I'm just kind of laughing thinking oh yeah like I've been here before you mean you were um focusing too much like on the details yeah yeah focusing on the details and not enough on like you know removing myself from that uh I just I want to go back to so I actually have a visceral reaction And I, it's a, it's, I can't help it. (laughs) I try, I try to self-manage. I'm human, but I actually have a visceral reaction when I engage with a professional, um, accountant, lawyer, doctor, who is tell, 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 tell. I have a really hard time to stay engaged and stay in the seat if I'm seated. Excuse me. I have doctors and accountants and lawyers who take a coach approach. And those are people who I align with because they're interested in how I'm experiencing X, Y, and Z. They're interested in knowing, you know, what my answer is, what my needs are, what what else I'm thinking about. Um, and so I align myself now with with people who I don't doesn't matter they're not professional coaches but they know how to take a coach approach with their clients 
Yeah, as a patient, you know, I have a, I have one doctor, and and I feel like that is a missing, a huge gap in so many professions. Um, teachers, you know, and I think about my son's, uh, one of his teachers. Um, and I'm going to just say Leanna. She was the one that could engage him because why she asked him questions, and he was eating out of the palm of her hand because she knew how to engage his brain and engage him as a human being. Uh, and so, you know, so much opportunity out there for people learning to apply the skills. Maybe you don't become a professional coach, but learning some of the skills and applying that to um, to the people that you work with to really help bring out, you know, their thoughts and feelings, but also that what we realize, we don't have to do all the work. We we don't have to make all kinds of assumptions because when we make all kinds of assumptions, we're doing lots of work um, and that takes a lot of energy. So if we could just get back to doing, you know, bringing to the table our best asset, whatever that might be in your profession, it's so much easier. Ashley, any thoughts to add to that one? Well, I'm going to bring it back to answer that, like, you know, what can't coaching do? Because I think that this is, we have kind of already alluded to this, or maybe that was actually in an early conversation, but coaching cannot do the work for you, right? So I don't know. And like, maybe this is, again, kind of the reason why we're showing up for this podcast, why you and I talked about doing this, Lauren, was a lot around like, people don't really know what coaching is. So people think they can show up to coaching and like, you know, the coaching conversation, what we're going to do, I'm going to do the work for you. And you're just going to have these like great thing, like walk takeaways. But there's a big piece of, and, and, you know, aspect of is the coachee. So the person who's wanting to be coached, are they ready for it? Because coaching is about you showing up for yourself and doing the work so that you can get the outcome. It's not about you showing up with me and me doing the work for you. Right. And I think that, you know, in my earlier months of coaching, I remember having clients who would show up and, you know, they're like, yeah, I'm ready for coaching. And I'm like, yeah, OK, like, let's do this. And then it's like, well, why are we like still circling on the same thing? And sometimes it has to be like having this courageous conversation. So, Pam, you and I have talked about that, right? Like coaching is always safe, but not always like comfortable or easy. And sometimes, you know, there's times I've had to call out clients, you know, like obviously in a professional, ethical way, you know, and at the end of our conversation, I'll be like, you know, like, what was like the most helpful for you? And they're like, actually, you calling me out, like you really, you know, like, that's what I needed. And so when, when coaches, when clients are able to understand that they have to show up to the table, coaching, you know, it can't do the work for you, you have to be willing to show up to the table and like move things forward for yourself. I love that. I think what I'm hearing in all of this is like, so when you show up to coaching, what you can expect is to get the results that you are looking for, right? Um, because that's what we do as coaches. We hold the process for you and we help you get there. We help remove the obstacles. We help figure out what's working, what's not working, what are the beliefs that led you to where you are, and what are the new beliefs that we want to practice and instill so that you can, you know, make more money, get... um. A, a pay raise, uh, move into a different position, leave your job and find a new career, um, anything, you know, what medical path you would like to go down in terms of healing, right? Like if you have some sort of ailments, right? A, a doctor with coaching skills would be able to ask those questions to help you craft your own healing journey. Yeah. I And I want to just add like it's a co-creation. So um, when we think about doctors, of course, they're going to bring their experience, expertise, um, all of that to the table to say, well, here, here's what I know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, which one of these works for you? It's, it's a partnership. It's really about um, co-creating outcomes. The other piece is getting clear on what you need from coaching, because coaching isn't the end all be all if, you know, depending on what it is that you need. So sometimes we just have blind spots. You know, I remember when I first, um, it was, became accredited it was like okay how the heck do you sell coaching <laughs> I just didn't know and I had been in business and sales you know most of my life but I didn't know how to start a practice of coaching so I hired a coach to help me so he was my mentor 
Steve Mitten, who was um, at MCC and has since retired. But, oh, it's like, oh, my God, okay, I just didn't know what I didn't know. So for the client, for anybody who's looking to hire a coach, be clear on what is it that you need. Um, is it a sounding board? Is it somebody that can co-create with you in a partnership of coaching? Um, or do you need a consultant? You know, like so it's getting super clear on on what you need from um your life right now, your your career, your business. I think too, I just want to add in there the difference between peer coaching or true coaching and taking a coach approach. Because a lot of our students inside of the academy, they're like executive leaders, they're CEOs, they're um managers, they are lawyers, they are, um, you know, all these different COOs, different roles, right? And so, of course, their intention is not to take coach training and then go be purely coaches. They've got other parts, they've got other roles. And that's why in the academy, we teach you, okay, like what hat are you wearing at, you know, certain times of the conversation? Because you need to know when you are stepping into a coaching role, um, and, you know, when you're stepping out of your coaching hat and into like mentoring or consulting or whatever. Um, so there are professionals out there that will take a coach approach, meaning that they will use questions to help you get the answers that you need and combine that with their expertise and all of their knowledge. Because, um, of course, as human beings, we can't possibly know everything <laughs> that there is to know on this planet. Um, but when it comes to your coaching and like executive coaching, leadership coaching, um, mindset coaching, business coaching, there might be some of that mentoring at play there. But a lot of the conversations when it comes to true coaching are going to be us or your coach helping you to clear those obstacles, get to the root of things, get to the underlying beliefs so that you can take massive action forward. Did I get that right? Or do you guys want to add anything else? Yeah, no, I love how you talked about shifting hats. So for leaders that are learning coaching skills inside their organization, um, they can get, you know, have some clear distinctions when they're having conversations with their directs um, or their team or, you know, a colleague, like what, what hat am I wearing right now? Because they might use a coach approach in their conversations or they might be purely coaching with a direct but then the direct is asking for them to mentor them. So it's just like, okay, I, I'm taking this hat off and I'm going to put this hat on right now. And so there's just helping people understand the clear distinctions um, and, and how appropriate that is when we think about the coaching profession. It's so important. And just to like, I, I don't know, maybe for the listeners too, like really clarifying what is the difference then between peer coaching and using a coach approach, like in a conversation? Yeah. So when we're engaged in a, a coaching assignment where we're saying, okay, it was six months, nine months, a year of coaching. Um, and here's the cadence. It's every other week for an hour. However, you um, you and your client set that up. You're purely coaching in that moment. Unless the client says, you know what, but I might need to pick your brain or I might need to, you know, learn a little bit more from you about this and this. And, and, and we ask a lot of questions around that and there might be some blind spots. And so what and what we do, though, as coaches is what else do they need? What else do they know? What else do they know? We, and once we've exhausted what else they know, then we can say, all right, I, I'm hearing an opportunity. Do you mind if I share a little bit of you know, insight? So it's the way in which we do that. Taking a coach approach. So that was that clear? It's, it's purely coaching. And then when we take a coach approach, we're having conversations like this. And I might say, and so like, Ashley, what's, what is your experience around that? You know, and, and oh, can you say more about that? So it's just infusing questions into a conversation that really help people think for themselves and bring out more dialogue because, you know, so often um, when we're at parties or engaging with people that people talk over each other and we don't hold the space for one another to fully flesh out what it is that we want to say um, or do we ask more questions about a situation? So we'll say, oh, that's nice. And yeah, yay, good for you. And then we'll go on to the next thing and on to the next thing. And so by engaging, using a coach approach, we're asking more questions and, you know, helping people to kind of share more about themselves or what they're up to, et cetera. 
It's funny that, um, you know, what came to mind when you were saying, you know, when we're at parties and stuff, we don't know how to listen or hold that space. And this is a really big thing I noticed that separates people with, you know, air quote, coach training and people who have become, you know, ICF certified is that my coaches who are not certified um, under the ICF would often like cut me off and just start talking over me. Oh, like I have the solution here. Just try to, and then I'm sitting there like a deer in headlights. Like that's not what I wanted. (laughs) Like I didn't even finish telling you what my problem was and what a waste of time, you know? So as true coaches, we are taught how to hold the space and how, you know, Pam always says, put a muffin in your mouth. Um, shut up, stop trying to tell people all how amazing you are and how much you know, and just listen. Still, and it's a practice. I mean, it's of course, still a- it always is. <laughs> We're never perfect at it. Right. And so hence the, you know, uh, the practice of coaching is that we're continually engaging in the practice of coaching. And what I love about the Academy is being in the the trenches with our learners, um, you know, brings us back to being the beginner again. And, uh, you know, that's part partly what lights me up about the Academy, just to keep getting refreshed and get back in the seat. Um, and being the learner and, and remembering some of the things and, and then also adding on to what we uh, what we already know. That's one of my favorite things about facilitating as well, because whenever I go in there, I learn new things, even though, you know, I've got like over 120 hours of like being in coach training and I'm working toward my 400 hours of, of practice coaching and coaching sessions. But I do not know everything. And there's things that I forget. Um, sometimes I go back to old patterns, not sometimes often. <laughs> I think we all do, you know? And yeah, yeah. Being able to admit that and being able to be open to learning is um I think something that coach training has really gifted me. And not being okay with not being perfect because I think, yeah, growing up, you know, you feel like you've got to be perfect and you have to be the best coach and the best mentor and all these things, the best sister and the best daughter and the best whatever. Um, So yeah, just learning how to own every part of you. And letting go of the ducks. Yeah. Oh my God. Marge Bussy and her ducks. Yeah. Yeah. The ducks for anybody who doesn't, well, you probably don't know, but we talk about the ducks quacking in your head as like, you know, the the limiting beliefs or, um, I know Melissa Ambrosini talks about your inner mean girl. So you know, that voice in your head that's telling you that you can't or that you've got to be better or do better. And I know this voice happens to a lot of um, high achievers. And yeah, the Ducks is from Marge Bussey from Royal Roads. So I want to shift into what can we do with a coach certification? So someone comes through the academy. What what the heck can they do with that after? Mm, What do they want to do with that after? (laughs) <laughs> is a good question. Uh, so we would start there, you know, based on on one's experience and uh, what they envision for themselves. And sometimes they don't necessarily have a vision for what that could look like. So um, some some coaches get their certification and they're internal coaches. And so they start to help develop a bench strength inside an organization um, so that they have coaches internally because, you know, long-term sustainability to hire an external coach for every single leader in your organization, not necessarily sustainable. So how do we, how do we develop the internal capability um, for those who are raising their hand saying, I love coaching, I want to learn more, uh, then we can build a bench strength. So coaches can, in fact, we have um, someone that we were just on a call with earlier who is building a bench strength of coaches in their organization. And she is now hired as one of their internal coaches. So it's so exciting to see. Um, so you can become an internal coach inside your organization. Uh, you can you can be that. You can develop a side hustle of, uh, uh, you know, develop your own practice and maybe have a handful of clients outside of your organization that you um, could coach. 
for some, it's, um, you know, going on to the next chapter of my career and I, I want to build a practice. I want to, or maybe not a full practice, but maybe I just, I want to, you know, have 10 or 12 clients just to coach and kind of just really do this part, part time. Um, so yeah, a huge opportunity. Um, some people blend it with, with other things that they are already doing. And so it's another offering, maybe they're, they're teaching or facilitating and then coaching becomes part of another offering. I'm just going to jump in and also say, I mean, people use this to their certifications within an organization, right? Like for their leadership, for management, for applying for like management positions, et cetera. Um, and like there's an external piece, right? Like I uh, quote being contracted on for like I was just contracted on for research, right? So I have a year contract where I'm going to be coaching where I, where I am coaching. And that's something that I'm going to, you know, I've used my credentials through coaching through coaching to get. And there's other roles out there um, I've seen too that ask for specific like ACC or I think it was like an a PCC, you know. Yeah, there's so many opportunities. You know, I decided to go ahead and grow my own coaching business where I'm like selling coaching. I'm marketing myself. Um, I'm in charge of getting my own clients. But I've also, you know, partnered with Pam and I have done some coaching under the PGC umbrella. Um, I know that like what you're doing, Ashley, you can get hired as an external coach to work with an organization. There are other coach training companies and they want, you know, they need facilitators or um, they're going into organization. So there's really like the sky is the limit. It's just about getting clear on what it is that you desire and, you um, yeah, how you want to use coaching in your in your world. And I think a lot of that becomes clear actually through coaching. So just to throw in there that I think a lot of people go through coaching and they don't know what the heck they want. And that is part of the beauty of the academy is that we you you're going to know, you know, by the end of the academy you're going to be more clear if not knowing because I don't think we ever fully know. We just kind of know a little bit more about what direction we're moving into but the clarity that comes from level one and then the deepening of that clarity in level two is um yeah just amazing mm, there are so many opportunities i'm hearing a lot of integration of um, mental health and coaching um being part of so how do we get out of when somebody's complete with with um therapy what's next for them. So, you know, I think there's some really great opportunities with integration of the mental health and well-being into coaching. Well, because we're, we coach holistically, but we stay in the, where are we now and, and where are we headed? Um, but I see the huge opportunities now with integrating both of those, um, which makes so much sense because once you've come through therapy, it's like, okay, now what? And, uh, and, and same thing, in your life, it's, you know, you might be at a certain stage in your life where you hire a coach and, and then you get somewhere and then you're into a new phase of your life. And, and it's often through these transition periods where um, we're looking for, for coaching. And as you said, Lauren, you know, through level one, we just really help take a deep dive on self. And so that self-reflection and getting, gaining clarity for self. And then uh, in conjunction with learning uh, coaching skills and and practice of coaching. So it's really a twofold um, kind of win-win, if you will. Quick question, and this is a yes or no, is coaching the way of the future? Yes. What do you think, Ashley? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. Do you want to add anything to that? I know that was a very quick, like. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say that like gone are the days. People don't want to be told what to do. First of all, I think people, not everybody, okay, but like some people are realizing that being told what to do isn't getting them the results that they want. Um, And I think that like as like a leadership model, like that doesn't work. Like Lauren, you and I go back to our experiences in you know, where we worked <laughs> and it didn't work. It didn't work. People are waking up to that and they want leadership who are going to help them 
to like leverage and get themselves ahead, like to move forward. They don't want to stay stagnant. They want further development. So yeah. Yeah. The best leaders are great coaches. And I really feel like there is a huge responsibility for leaders to lead through coaching, to really tap into that untapped capability that exists. And it just, it's not just living in organizations, it's living within our lives. Um, and it actually makes me so sad to see the, the shrinking thinking. You know, it, it feels so Neanderthal when you, when you kind of come over the, come over to the other side, if you will. And that might sound really strange for some people, but it feels like this just, it is this awakening. I don't, it, it isn't, I think it is an awakening to self and others and being an observer um, and learning to listen and to ask questions and to really help people think for themselves is the way of the future, is the only way through, is the only way we're going to continue to learn and grow and evolve as humans. Yeah. And what's coming up for me is, um, first of all, it is an awakening because if you have never experienced coaching or coach training, like I feel like I was in the dark, you know, before learning all of these skills. And, you know, I had like inclinations and I was like aware and stuff, but coach training was like, it completely changed my brain. It changed the way I be, the way I reflect. It changed everything. The way I sell to people, right? I went from selling like in a way that felt inauthentic to me to realizing what I needed to do to sell authentically. Um, and and from a place of the like your heart, right? Not just like, you know, I was a health coach before. Come and take my six-week program to lose 10 pounds. Like, what is it really? Like, what really matters? You know, it's not about like losing weight. It's not about whatever. It's it's that service and like what you're really here to do in this world. Um, and it's that human connection. And I truly can't explain it. Like, I don't feel like there's really any words for coaching. I feel like it's something you really just need to experience. And it's actually what our clients, what our grads experience in the space, you know, you can see them do this. <laughs> you can see them get in, get to know themselves. And uh, it's, you know, it reminds me of a, a blog I wrote when I first opened my coaching practice. And I think it was for White Oaks Magazine. I can't remember. But all I remember is this. Uh, I put an image of this head disconnected from the body it was, or this head sticking out of the sand. And it was, it's that. It's like we walk around with our heads disconnected from our bodies. And then we have this awakening when we we start to learn and go, take this deep dive into who we are and and, you know, this this internal reflection and we do the work through coaching, through coaching one-on-one -on -one or through the academy. And all of a sudden there is this, this awakening and this deeper connection to self. And we're not walking around disconnected to our bodies. Um, it is this heart-centered work that is, it's hard to describe. Lauren, you're right. It's hard to describe. So for anyone listening um, and your interest is peaked, you're like, what is this about I have no idea. I don't know what coaching is, but I would love to experience what they're talking about. I would love for you to reach out to me because we have a number of ways that we can help you experience coaching, whether that's through a 30 minute um, free coaching call where we just show you, you know, and you get to try it on and we'll coach you. Or, um, you know, what we also offer is for people to come into the room um, during a Coach Approach Academy session. When we're teaching, you can come into the room, whether we're online or in person, and um, just get a feel for for what coaching is really like. Um, and yeah, we can go from there. Hey, Changemaker. If you are interested in this conversation, you're curious about the coaching industry and if coaching is the right path for you, I want you to listen up. Whether you're ready to start or enhance your career as a coach, or you simply want to learn about what coaching can really offer you, 
We are here to help you on your journey. Ready to find more meaning in your career? Do you have an inner knowing that you're here for a bigger purpose but don't know what that is yet? Or maybe you're so ready to stop taking on all of the pressure and responsibility and start empowering your clients, your team, and the people around you to step into their power and potential. Well, then coaching might be for you. Whatever it is that you're looking for, we would love to support you in getting clear on your next steps. Book a complimentary 30-minute discovery call with Lauren or Ashley to experience coaching firsthand and get all of your questions answered. See the link in the show notes to book your call today. So last question. Um, I want us all to share a horror story or growing edge moment from coaching, from your coaching experience as a coach. Who's first? Go ahead, Ashley. I already kind of alluded to mine, but it it still... And it's probably recorded somewhere. I should go back and find it. But it was it was a conversation that I had with someone, right? And this is the birds chirping. Because I thought this individual, too, had similar coaching experience that I had. So I got in my, all in my head, like, oh, my God, she's a better coach. She's been coaching longer than I have. Anyways, I got into the call. And I got I got caught up in the, in the story. And I was asking questions so for me this is like when I zoom in on something as opposed to like zooming out and being able to see the full picture and like picking like intuiting what I need to get to I was just so focused in on this one thing and I was going in circles asking this person questions about something that I did not know what it was and I didn't need to and I remember I don't know if I ever shared this with you because I think both of you are aware of this conversation And I almost was like, I'm sorry, I need to end this conversation. Like, I literally almost was like, peace out. Like, I can't, you know, but I I found it in myself. I don't know how (laughs) to get through it. But that will forever in my mind be. And it's not even a, it's, it's not such, it's a horror story for me, right? Like, I'm sure she wasn't necessarily like picking up what I, you know, but in my own mind, that's, that was my horror story. Because you know what you know, she didn't know it what you knew so yeah I get that that bit around this is how my this was my experience and yeah I think I was the one providing feedback on that one right I don't know it might have been I I literally don't remember like I think it was like that call ended and I was like holy hell I'll thank god it's done like let's move on yeah no I know which one you're talking about and you did a great job see this is where We get caught up in our own heads as coaches, but also that's what's so lovely about the Academy is that when you receive feedback, because that's part of the requirement, um, what I love is that we focus on, yeah, we debrief what went wrong, right? But we actually want to focus on what went right and what we did well. And what I can remember is that you did, there was a moment in that conversation where you turned it around. And I think where you realize like, and and maybe it was toward the end, but it didn't matter because she got what she needed out of the conversation. Um, but yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. It's, um, it's a different experience when you're in it and you're, you're learning and you're thinking this is really not good. And yet, yeah, it's good. It's just that you have the learning now. And so it's a bit of a, a tricky place to be sometimes. Um, I guess for me, it was going into Royal Roads and thinking I knew what I knew. And then I, I coached a general in our cohort and, um, like a brilliant, brilliant man in the military. And he was, I don't know, maybe late fifties and I'm holding, holding space and I'm doing the thing. And it was my first experience having a man cry in front of me well I don't know that I've ever had coaches cry in front of me maybe at the end when they were so elated by their whatever the results but in the middle of the conversation I'd asked a question and (laughs) held the space and then he just bubbled up and just started crying and so it wasn't a horror story but I was like I had to like 
gain my ground. Like I was like, what do I do with this? I've never had this experience. So it, it threw me off my game. But I was like, so wow. You know, and at the same time, it threw me off my game, but I was just so, you know, invested in the conversation and holding space for him. Um, yeah, it was it was a life changing moment also, I guess, maybe horror, but horror because in the moment you're being observed, <laughs> right, by faculty. And it's like, holy crap, what do I do with this? Yeah. And it's like it's activating that like fight, fight or flees. Right. Yeah. And when you're in that, you can't access your prefrontal cortex to then. So there's like a lot that happens and like this is all all of this is like a shameless plug for the program. But literally like these are the skills that you use, right? Like how can we like silence all that, zoom back out and like stay present, right? Goes back to the core competencies of the ICF, like all of those things. Yeah. Lauren, what's yours? Yeah, well, I was just going to add on that. So it teaches you how to navigate these situations because when we're when people are being vulnerable with us, like that is a true gift. That doesn't happen, you know, all the time. And um, so, yeah, we we learn, we teach you and we learn in this process, like how to hold that space and how to just be there instead of trying to fill the space with noise, with chatter, with like, oh, are you OK? Like, let me get you a tissue. I mean, the tissues were probably there, but um we teach you how to navigate those those situations and build that confidence to be able to navigate those with with more like ease and grace i would say so my situation was um one of my clients was struggling with letting go of control and so we were talking about this idea of surrender and what does it mean to surrender and you know we got to the point where she just got so frustrated because she was like, well, how do I surrender? And I was like, that's a great question. How do you surrender? And I think I, I always think back and I'm like, was this a situation where I held the space and I was I stayed true to coaching or was this a situation where I could have used clearer distinctions to give a little bit of um, information or like fill in some gaps? Right. And you know, when it comes to, I think the topic was big, when it comes to letting go of control, it's um, it's difficult. Like, how do you explain to someone, like, how to let go of control? So I, I stuck to true coaching, and my client got so pissed off at me. And she was like, well, uh, I don't know. I guess I should just go hire someone who can tell me how to surrender and teach me. And I was like, okay, like, I feel that you're getting frustrated with this like I, I hear you I'm really trying to partner with you on this and I'm trying to help you get there through coaching um but it's challenging you know when you are meeting me with this frustration so how do we move forward and I'm so glad that I had coaching skills in that moment and it's a conversation that will I think forever be in my mind because it was a moment where it was like, oh my God, like if I didn't have coaching skills, I would not have been able to navigate that that situation, first of all, because I had to provide very direct feedback. Like here's what it is. And I'm someone that I don't like confrontation, you know, and someone's paying me for me to put them back in their place. Like that was very scary. <laughs> so thankful that I had um, coaching skills in that moment for sure. My client ended up coming around and we worked it out um, and they were actually practicing the art of surrender, which what is, is what I call it. Um, and so things definitely move forward from there, but it was definitely a very intense moment for me. And yeah, just grateful that I I had experience with coaching and I I could feel my body being very anxious and very like, oh my God, I don't have the answer. I don't have the answer. I don't have the answer. And my brain was like, you don't need the answer. You don't need the answer. You don't need the answer. Um, so yeah, it was very, very interesting and grateful for it, you know, grateful for all of the coaching experiences, the horror stories, the growing edges that I've had so that I can always, you know, integrate them and and learn from them and and always be my best self as a coach. Yeah. Wow. I love that, Lauren. And I'm, um, I just want to say that, you know, you, you, you do everything with grace. And so 
love and grace. And so I can only imagine how you navigated that and wonderful that coaching skills helped you through it. And I want to underscore when we safe, not always comfortable, uh, Marge Bussey or Carolyn Honlon would say, um, we're not here to have water cooler conversations. We're not here to play safe. Our client, our responsibility to our clients is to, you know, kind of push the envelope a bit to be courageous with them, because if not us, then who? And so when we hit a nerve, Lauren, and I think you hit a nerve, it sounds to me that you hit a nerve, we're going to get a reaction. And so it's how do I need to be in this moment? And when it's like a holy, <laughs> what just happened? And and being okay to, being okay with it in the, like in the moment, of course, it's 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 challenging and how do I move through this together with my client so it happens and I, I'm trying to remember I know I've had that happen I'm trying to remember a specific uh, instance but yeah what are the things that trigger us and then how do we be with that and uh, and how do our skills help us navigate um, the conversations because they can get intense yeah it just um, reminded me of another one where I was on a a discovery call with a PhD candidate and they did not want to be there. Um, and halfway through, I was like, well, so, I mean, what do you want from this conversation? Like, why are you here? And they hung up on me. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I guess that's not a good fit. So, yeah, I mean, things are going to happen, right? But the coaching skills that we teach um, and the ones that you really focus on practicing and embodying, man, they're like so transferable. They're those, you know, in university, they taught me like transferable skills, the, the reading and the writing and the communication and all of that critical thinking, like coaching truly is, I believe, a transferable skill because you can always come back to that present moment, you know, detach from the outcome and just ask a question, right? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. The love of coaching. The love of coaching and finding fit is key. Yes. Oh my God. So key. And um, yeah, yeah, definitely key. Any last words for today's conversation? I so appreciate you both for being here and for having these conversations. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess what I want to just add to that is it really is important for people who are looking for a coach um, or looking for a, a, a coaching academy to just check fit. You know, you really want it to be uh, an experience that's in alignment with who you are. And, uh, you know, it's it's a two-way street. We partner with our potential clients and our potential um, candidates who are coming into our programs to see if it it's a good match because um, we, we are in it together. And we're both investing time. So number one, you want to make sure it's a good fit um, for your experience and where you want to get to. It's also part of the code of ethics, right? Like you actually can't keep a client. It's unethical for you to keep a client there if they don't want to be there. So that's why we are so um, upfront about that, about you know connecting with our clients and making sure that it's a good fit before because there's nothing worse than you know having you know, hiring a coach or whatever, realizing you don't like it. And then, oh, there goes, you know, 10K, 5K, whatever it is that you invested into the program, which is unfortunately how a lot of the um, coaching industry operates. You know, you put your money in and too bad if you don't like it. Um, I just remembered this one coaching academy and I told myself I would sign up just to see what it was like. It was a dollar a month to get coaching skills. Yeah. So beware of um, people who are teaching you true coaching. It's not going to cost a dollar. It won't cost a hundred dollars. It's not going to cost maybe even a thousand dollars. I th I think that's still really lowballing it. Um, in a future episode, we will go through you know what it actually takes to become a coach and and give more insight on that. But just be cognizant of the fact that it's unregulated. Ask 
curious questions. And um, if you at any point need support, let me know. I am very well versed <laughs> at this point. Not all well versed, but I'm well versed with the International Coach Federation and the requirements. So I'd be happy to help. Uh, I was just going to say, if any of this is piquing anybody's interest, don't hesitate to reach out and jump on a discovery call with one of us because we have our next cohort coming through, right? Starting off at Foundations in September. And, you know, if you think that this might be something for you, even just from like a personal perspective, like that's where I started out was I needed something for me to learn more about me. And coming through Foundations obviously made me flip and do a 360 in my life. Um, so yeah, don't hesitate to reach out. Lauren, I know you're going to put the stuff in the show notes and um, we can have conversation, open conversation mm-hmm. about this. And we just did an episode, uh, two episodes back that shares Ashley's journey through coach training. So um, if you want, you know, someone's personal perspective, you can go and listen to that. Mm, love it. Thank you so much for this conversation today, Lauren and Ashley. The world needs more coaches. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast today. If you like what you heard, I would love it if you left a review. If you like my vibe, come and hang with me in my Facebook or Telegram group. I'll drop the link to my email list below where you can get instant access. Make sure you check the show notes for any other links that I mentioned today. And until next time, I'm sending you waves of abundance.